Good morning. How are y'all doing this morning? I hope you're doing great. Now, in my last pantry staple episode, I told y'all it would be a series, right? So if you're just now tuning in, look back in my playlist and you'll find the other pantry staple videos. I said at the very end of it that I was going to, I said I was tempted to record it all in one day and, you know, just make sure that they were separate so that y'all don't have a two hour long video to try to sit through. Well, I'm still going to record them separately, but if I have everything out, I'm just going to go ahead and do it all in a day. So you will see me wearing the same beautiful little outfit <laughs> so that I can get everything done in a timely manner for you. Now, the last one, I think it was unedited. It was about 21 minutes. So if I can keep them about that length, I hope that is pretty palatable to y'all to where you don't have to, you know, it's like, come on, Lynn. You're taking forever. <laughs> I'll try not to do that to you. But like I've warned y'all plenty of times before, I talk a lot. <laughs> but anyway, so today, all right, the last video I did ranch seasoning and, um, copycat Jiffy cornbread mix, right? And you can, you know, check back at my previous video if you want to see that. Um, if I remember, I may link it down below in the description, but these descriptions are going to be pretty long with me, you know, putting out all the ingredients and everything. So, if I do forget, just look back at my channel if you don't mind. Um, that way it'll give you a good idea if you like those things. Now, today I'm going to be doing uh, taco seasoning and a white cake mix. Ooh. A white cake mix. Now, this is just for the white cake mix. It'll just be the dry ingredients. You you know, I'll, I'll put the, the wet ingredients down below with the instructions. And I have a little handy dandy recipe over here so that I can read it out to you. Because I'll be 51 next month and my memory is not what it should be. Or my memory is not what it used to be, rather. <laughs> Okay, so that is for the white cake mix I can use. And I'm just using these little jars, I hope. Like with the <laughs> with the ranch seasoning mix, I used my pint-sized jar. Oh, and to make these uh, more shelf-stable, I do use my vacuum pump. And I bought a little manual one off of Amazon that works beautifully. I can link it down below. I get no kickback from any of that or anything it's just it's a handy little manual pump but it it makes them stay longer shelf stable longer I'm trying to get my words out but anyway what i was trying to tell you is that right that ranch um seasoning sorry my ring caught the thing but my ranch seasoning mix almost did not fit in this puppy so, I'm hoping my white, white cake mix, I'm hoping my white cake mix will, I don't know, it'll be about three and a half cups, I don't think it's going to fit. I think I might have to get one of my quart size. So, give me one second. Ugh. As a homesteader and a canner, I have plenty of jars. So, I'll have this out just in case that my little bitty pint jar isn't enough. <laughs> All right, so let's get started on the taco seasoning. All right, let's see. 
I need up. See, I thought. Oh, I forgot. The last time I uh I used all my paprika. Now I have seen some people used a um I think they get it from Azure, a uh, smoked paprika that is supposed to be really, 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 really good. Well, I had already bought Walmart brand. So, like I said in my last video, I'm going to use what I have. I'm not going to waste it. And I have not tried Azure yet. I do want to try it, but... I just haven't made that leap yet. Okay, so I need three tablespoons, and that's not gonna fit. Like I said in my last one, I make a mess. Put that right there, that's gonna fall. All right. But anyway, um, I have some um, little bit of flour left on that one. Like I said, I just did that other video. So, all right. So I'm gonna put this here so that I don't make too big of a mess. So I need three tablespoons. I wish I could dip my thing in there to get it because it doesn't want to shake out very well. All right, one. Oh. This is going to take a month of Sundays. There we go. Two. little bit more than three tablespoons, but it's okay. It's taco seasoning. Paprika is just going to make it taste better. A little bit extra. It will be all right. All right. So now I have my chili powder. This I got from Sam's. You see how big this puppy is? It's going to take me forever to use it. Oh. All right. Chili powder. Let's see. One and a quarter teaspoon. One. And so I don't have my quarter out, so I'm just going to use half of a half. <laughs> so, um, actually, I put a little bit too much in there. It's a one. It's a quarter to a, a one teaspoon, but that's all right. I don't mind a little bit of extra. Um, I have to be very careful with my taco seasonings and my salsas and everything because of that ulcer, but I'll make sure that I'm very, very careful with that. All right. Now I'm going to put that over here because I wasn't supposed to use that yet. I had them in wrong order. Now it's cu uh, ground cumin, another Sam's Club. All right. So this, I do two tablespoons of it. It's like that paprika. It's ground so fine it sticks to everything. Ooh, that is strong. I mean, I like cumin. You just got to be very careful with it. <laughs> All right. So now we got a taste, uh, one tablespoon of onion powder. At least that pours out easier. Yeah. 
I'm gonna do a little extra kind of. I gotta make up that little extra of chili powder that I put in there, so I need to tame it down with some other things. But I don't use, you know, I tend to use. Most of the time they say a packet of taco seasoning to a pound of hamburger meat. Well, I use about two and a half pounds, two and a quarter to two and a half pounds, usually. So it kind of disperses the flavor and it doesn't really bother me that bad. And I love to do sour cream on my tacos so that that, that helps. Um, so I need one tablespoon of garlic powder. Two tablespoons of oregano. What did I say? It's two teaspoons. So if I said the other word, I am sorry. But it's two teaspoons of oregano. And the good thing is, is I do type all this out. And I do put it at the end in the description so if my words get away from me and I misspeak I won't mistype I am the typo queen now but usually it's typos to where you can still see what I'm saying I don't I don't mistakenly write TSP for TBSP you know I don't do tablespoon for teaspoon or vice versa you know what I'm trying to say so my typos don't get that bad. Okay, so now on this it says salt, and I have used table salt, but I prefer sea salt, and I just do fine ground sea salt. Um, Two teaspoons of salt. And then, I'm sorry, one teaspoon of pepper. All right, let me see. On the inside of this funnel, I have uh, lots and lots of seasonings that I'm trying to get down into the, the jar so that I don't waste any. Now, the whole premise behind my pantry staples is so that I don't have to, A, go to the grocery store as much, but B, I can also decide what goes in to my, oh, isn't that pretty? Before I shake it up, I'm going to show y'all. Isn't that pretty? Actually, I know it's going to change, I mean, the, the situation will change a little bit when I, um, nah, <laughs> Because when I, when I go to vacuum seal it, it's going to change, you know, it's going to mix all, it's going to mix it up to where it's not as pretty anyway, so. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, I do like to get these pantry staples, and when I harvest some of my own stuff and make it to where the ingredients are straight out of my land, that's my goal. Um. Uh, like my garlic, my, my, I've already got sage, I've got basil, thyme, rosemary, um, onion, garlic. Now my onion and garlic I haven't harvested yet, but when I do, I will get it out and I will do, um, I will mince garlic for a head of time use, and then I'll dry some minced garlic, I'll dry some minced onion, I'll powder some onion and garlic so that, you know, I can get rid of these. 
These are not the best ingredients. It is what I already have on hand, so I'm not going to waste them. But I can start the process by making my own shelf stable stuff with the stuff I've already purchased from the store. And that way, by the time I have incorporated all of getting rid of all the store bought stuff and replacing it with my homegrown harvested items, I'll be there. So, all right. So now that was our taco seasoning. Now this is three tablespoons. Um, three tablespoons is one. I see something climbing the tree out here and I'm trying to figure out what it is. I don't keep um, curtains on my windows because we have 45 acres and there's nobody back here. I'm surrounded by woods. Except in my bedroom. You know, I, ha I have a curtain. Well, I don't have a curtain in my bedroom. I have mini blinds, but anyway. Um, forgot what I was saying. Oh, three teaspoons of the taco seasoning is one packet of store-bought kind, okay? And like I said, I'm going to vacuum seal all of these so that they last longer. I'm just not going to do that at the moment. Because you don't need to sit there and watch me vacuum seal. Alright, now, this is the white cake mix. Um, I do have King Arthur all-purpose flour. But I have some of this left that I need to use. So I'm going to use it. Um, right now, my King Arthur, I have all-purpose King Arthur. Then I have uh, bread flour. And then I have... No, that's right. It's the all-purpose and the bread flour. I don't have self-rising flour. Um... I do want to try it. I might get a little bitty bag of that because there's one recipe that I want to try that has that. So, I, don't, I just don't use self-rising because usually I use baking powder and baking soda and all that for the leavening. So, I don't use it. But anyway, so this is just plain Jane all-purpose flour. Now, as I've said in multiple things, like when I, we do our sourdough bagels or when... I did my um, other pantry stable. I like to use a scale. I will give you the cups. I don't know. I don't have the ounces right now. But um, I will give you the ounces. I mean, I will give you the cups and I'll give you the grams. Okay. So that, you know, if you decide, ugh. I don't think I'm going to try. This is not going to hold five cups. So, I'm going to go with this. <laughs> Alright. So anyway, I put it on the scale so that I know exactly how much I'm doing. Alright. So, all-purpose flour. It is going to be... Hold on, I have to rinse my... To wash off my funnel because I'm not going to use it. I didn't mind a little bit of flour going into that taco mix. If worse came to worse and some didn't get off. But I'm not going to do that with my um, cake mix. Because I don't want the taco seasoning stuff in my cake mix. Alright. Oh, so... It calls for two and three-fourths cup of flour. You can do it that way. If you have no problem doing it that way, be my guest. I like grams, like I said. I like to measure it. So, it is 344 grams of flour, all-purpose flour. I already know it's going to be at least two cups, so I can just kind of shift that in there. And see, when you zero it out on your scale, you, um, 
and no experienced bakers and stuff, I'm not talking to y'all. <laughs> but if you are new to this, if you zero it out on your scale, when you already have those things in there, so that, you know, it's um, only flour that it's measuring now. So 344 grams. I'm almost there. There we go. All right. Um, you know what? I still have to add sugar, so I'm going to leave that. Okay. So it's going to be 219 grams of sugar, or if you want to do it, it's a one and three quarter cup. So, okay. I don't know if I can show you. All right, so I'm zeroing it out again. So I need, it's either one and three quarter cups or 219 grams of sugar. Oh, it's barely gonna make fit in this quart jar. Um. I have to leave the uh, the funnel in there because it measure it weighed it. I weighed it with the funnel in there. All right, there's 219 grams. All right, so cross your fingers that when I lift this. It doesn't over. Ooh. Mm. That was too close. <laughs> that was too close. All right. Let me put this up real quick. Okay. Now, y'all see, I don't have very much room. But thankfully, I only have baking soda and salt left. I need two teaspoons of baking powder and it says three quarter of a teaspoon of salt so the three quarters of a teaspoon of salt I will be kind of um, guesstimating because I will have to use my teaspoon Boy, that's getting close to the top of that one. All right. So we're just going to guesstimate about what might be three quarters of a teaspoon. Yeah. I'd say that's about a, that's about three quarters. And I'm going to use unsalted butter when I go to mix my wet ingredients. So, oops, that'll help. All right. Now, I'm going to very, very carefully show y'all. <laughs> That got real tight. Now, usually I would have done this in a bowl and then used my funnel to pour it into my container. But since I'm going to pour all this into a bowl when I get ready to use it, I'm not sweating um, if it gets mixed properly in here or not. I mean, I can mix it somewhat. But I will end up using a, um, probably a whisk or something when I go to put it in there in the, um, in the bowl anyway. All right, so let me run back, run that back down for you. I used 344 grams of all-purpose flour or two and three quarter cup. I used 
219 grams of sugar or one and three quarter cup. Now I will say this, the recipe called for super fine sugar. I was gonna use my mortar and pestle to, you know, grind down the, the, the granules a little bit, but it really, it really doesn't matter. Um, if you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see it texturally in the recipe anyway. When you're, when you finish your cake mix, it won't matter. So, two teaspoons of baking powder, and then three quarters of a teaspoon of uh, salt. And like I said, I just use sea salt. And for the wet ingredients, you use three quarters of a cup unsalted butter, five egg whites, so you will have to separate your yolks and your whites, one cup of milk, two teaspoons of vanilla, which I have homemade vanilla, and I just, I, ten, I don't tend to, I mean, I will loosely measure it by pouring it, <laughs> but I don't do it, you know, with the, with the little teaspoon here. Um, and then a half a teaspoon of almond extract. Now, I haven't made my own almond extract, and I want to, but it's not as easy as it is when you make it vanilla extract so I haven't jumped into that yet and there's not a whole lot of recipes that I use that require almond extract so I just have bought it in the past <laughs> but anyway um, I'll put the instructions in, the, in that recipe down below I hope y'all have enjoyed this if you have give me a thumbs up please it does help or subscribe to my channel. Um, I am new. I'm a very fairly new um, podcaster. And I have this homesteading stuff. And then I have other crafts that uh, I do. Because to me, homesteading and the knitting and the crochet and, and the weaving and all the other stuff that I do. To me, it's all crafting. Because... I'm taking something and I'm making a garment or I'm making socks or I'm making hand towels. But I'm also doing that with my homesteading stuff too. I'm growing my food, so I'm making it. And to me, it's just all part of doing things by hand, you know? So, anyway, um, I appreciate, appreciate y'all taking the time to hang out with me. And stay tuned for the next in my series of pantry staples. Y'all have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.